Hello everyone, welcome to Ashok IT. So in this video, we will be covering top 20 FAQs on AWS. So let's start. Question one is, what is EC2? EC2 is a virtual machine in the cloud on which you have OS level control. You can run this cloud server whenever you want and can be used when you need to deploy your own server in cloud similar to your on-premise server. And when you want to have full control over the choice of hardware and the update on machine. Next question, what is Snowball? Snowball is a small application that enables you to transfer terabyte of data inside and outside the AWS environment. First, we have to create a job, then we'll have to connect to the Snowball. Then we have to copy data to the snowball and then our data move to S3. Let's move to next question. What is CloudWatch? So CloudWatch helps you to monitor AWS environments like EC2, RDS, RDS instances, CPU utilization. It also triggers alarm depending on the various matrices. Moving on to next question. What is Elastic Transcoder? Elastic Transcoder is an AWS service tool that helps you to changing a video's format and resolution to support various devices like tablets, smartphones, and laptops of different resolution. Let's move to next question. What do you understand by VPC? And VPC is Virtual Private Cloud. VPC stands for Virtual Private Cloud. It allows you to customize your networking configuration. VPC is a network that is logically isolated from other networks in the cloud. It also allows you to have a, your own private IP address, internet gateways, subnets, and security groups. Let's move to next question. DNS and load balancer service comes under which type of cloud service? So DNS and load balancer are the part of IaaS storage, that is infrastructure as a service. There are two types of, or we can say there are two major network services offered by a private cloud service provider, that is load balancing and DNS. And what is DNS? DNS is domain name system. Load balancing provides a single point of access to multiple servers that run behind it. Let's move to next question. What are the storage classes available in Amazon S3? So storage classes available in Amazon S3 are Amazon S3 standard, Amazon S3 infrequent access, Amazon S3 reduced read and entry storage, and Amazon Glacier. Let's move to next question. Explain what T2 instances are. T2 instances are designed to provide moderate baseline performance and the capability to bust to higher performance as required by the workload. T2 instances are bustable performance instances that provides a baseline level of CPU performance with the ability to bust above the baseline. Let's move to next question. What are key pairs in AWS? So key pairs are secure login information for your virtual machines. To connect to the instances, you can use key pair which contain a public key and a private key. A key pair is the combination of that, that is public key that is used to encrypt the data and the private key that is used to decrypt data. Let's move to next question. How many subnets can you have per VPC? You can have 200 subnets per VPC. The number of subnets you can have per VPC in AWS is determined by the size of the IP address range in your allocate, the range you allocate to the VPC and how you choose to divide the address range in subnets. Let's move to next question. List different types of cloud services. 
so there are several types of cloud services that are software as a service also called as saas data as a service known as daas platform as a service paas and infrastructure as a service iaas let's move to next question what is the relation between the availability zone and reason so in aws and aws availability zone is a physical location where an amazon data center is located on the other hand an aws reason is a collection or the group of the availability zones or the data centers this setup helps you services to be more available as you can place your vms or virtual machines in different data centers within an aws region if one of the data center fails in the region the client request still gets served from the other data center located in the same region this arrangement thus helps you service to be available even if the data centers goes long can you now tell which is the recent availability zone launched in india can you if you know the place you can please write that in comment section let's move to next question what are the different types of ec2 instances based on their cost so there are different types of ec2 instances those are on demand instance spot instance and reserved instance on demand instance so these instances are prepared as and when we need it's like on demand as per the name whenever you feel the need of the new ec2 instance you can go ahead and create an on demand instance it is cheap for the short time but not when taken for the long time spot instance these types of instances can be bought through a bid in model these are comparatively cheaper than on demand instances now we can come to reserved one reserved instances are those which you can create that you can reserve for a year or so these types of instances are especially useful when you know in advance that you will be needing the an instance for a long term in such cases you can create a reserved instance and save heavily cost on it let's move to next question what are the consistency model of modern dbs offered in aws so there are two types of consistency models the number one is eventual consistency and number two is strong consistency eventual consistency it means that the data will be consistent eventually but may be not immediate this will serve the client request faster but chances are that some of the initial read request may read the stale data this type of consistency is preferred in systems where data need not to be in real time for example if you don't need the recent tweets on twitter or the recent posts on facebook for a couple of second it is acceptable now move to the strong consistency it provides an immediate consistency where the data will be consistent along all the db servers immediately accordingly this model may take some time to make the data consistent and subsequently start serving the request again however in this model it is guaranteed that all the responses will always have a consistent data now let's move to next question what are recovery time objective and the recovery point objective like what is the difference between these two in aws so recovery time objective is the maximum acceptable delay between the interruption of service and the restoration of services this translates to a acceptable time window when the service can be unavailable recover point objective it is the maximum acceptable amount of the time since the last data restore point it translates to the acceptable amount of data loss which lies between the last recovery point and the interruption service let's move to next question can you change the private ip address of a ec2 instance while it is running or in a stoppable state let's see answer no a private ip address of an ec2 instance cannot be changed 
When an EC2 instance is launched, a private IP address is assigned to that instance at the boot time. This private IP address is attached to the instance for its entire lifetime and can never be changed. Let's move to next question. What are the policies that you can set for your user's password? There are different policies we can set for the user's password that you can set a minimum length of password. You can ask the user to add at least one number or the special character to the password, assigning the requirements of the particular character types, including uppercase letter, lowercase letter, also the numbers, non alphanumeric characters. You can also enforce the automatic password expiration. We can prevent the reuse of old password and the request of the password reset upon the next AWS sign in. You can also have the AWS user contact an account administrator where the user has allowed the password to expire. Let's move to next question. Is there a way to upload a file that is greater than 100 megabytes in AWS S3? Yes, it is possible by using multi-part uploading utility from AWS. With the multi-part uploading utility, larger files can be uploaded in multiple parts that are uploaded independently. You can also decrease upload time by uploading these parts in parallel. After the uploading is done, the parts are merged into the single object or the file of, to create the original file from which the parts are created. Let's move to next question. What is the power user access in AWS? An administrator user will be the similar to the owner of the AWS resource. He can create, delete, modify, or view the resource and also grant permission to the other users of the AWS resources. A power user access provides administration access without the capability to manage the user and permissions. In the other words, a user with the power user access can create, delete, modify, or see the logs, but he cannot grant permission to the other users. Let's move to next question. So what is the instance store volume and then EBS volume? An instance store volume is temporary storage that is used to store the temporary data required by an instance to function. The data is available as long as the instance is running. As soon as the instance turn off, the instance store volume get removed and the data gets deleted. On the other hand, an EBS volume represent a persistent storage disk. A data stored in an EBS volume will be available even after the instance is turned off. So that's all for today. Thank you for this video. Please like this video, subscribe our channel and comment whatever you need. You can comment below and also comment the answer of the question which I have asked in between. Share it with your friends and if you need the similar videos, you can press the bell icon for that. Thank you.